Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad to see you here in the house of the Lord on this day that the Lord has made. So we are truly thankful and blessed to be here in the house of the Lord on this day. A few announcements before we begin our worship. This is uh, the first Sunday of the month. With that, it is LWML Mic Box Sunday every first Sunday of the month. So if you have collected those mites from this previous month, you may place them in the LWML purple and white boxes. There's one down here. One back there, and then one over uh, near the nursery. There are the LWML mite boxes. Also in the bulletin, you'll see the blurb in regards to what those mites go towards and what missions and ministries the LWML continues to help and support. A couple of them that are highlighted in this month, we have the, the Mongolia, what's happening in Mongolia with the, the continued mission efforts there, and also the Deaconess Studies at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, Missouri. So take some time later on and read what is happening by the support of those LWML mic boxes. Also, just to let you know that immediately following the service on your way out today, the LWML is having a door offering after the service to support the Chinese mission here at St. Paul. So please, uh, if you would, please consider uh, giving to help support our Chinese mission. And once again, that is brought to you by our LWML. So those ladies will be collecting that door offering uh, on your way out today. Uh, later this week, a couple activities coming up here at St. Paul's and Evansville Lutheran School on Tuesday night. Tuesday night uh, from 6 to 8 in our meeting rooms, the Evansville Lutheran School Kindergarten Information Night. So if you know someone who is looking for kindergarten next year, please make sure that they attend this event. Uh, it takes place once again this Tuesday from 6 to 8. If you would like more information about it or have any questions, please call the school office in regards to that. That's taking place on Tuesday night. Wednesday continues our midweek Lenten series, so Lenten midweek worship services. We have at 10 in the morning and 6.30 in the evening. There is a light dinner at 5.30. We'll continue to look at in the crosses of Christ I glory, and the cross we'll be looking at this week is the Saltire Cross, the Cross of Humility. So that is what we'll be looking at this coming Wednesday as we look to the cross in the Christ I glory. Also, one other announcement, next Sunday, just a reminder, Daylight Savings Time begins. Yeah, losing an hour of sleep, everyone loves that. So just a reminder, uh, most of your clocks probably will just update automatically as you sleep, but just a reminder that Daylight Savings Time takes place next Sunday. So if you come here uh, thinking it's now, it will have uh, already been. So just uh, be aware of that. So once again, Daylight Savings Time next Sunday on our order of worship. Our order of worship this day is as printed in our bulletins. We ask God's blessings on our worship this day, and we begin with the Ring of the Bells.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive me and forgive my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of the Lord and of his Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by the virtue of my office as a call and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him in honor. With long life, I will satisfy him. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. The Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague shall be your enemies. For he will command his angels concerning you. To guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up. Lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will tread on your foot. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him. And show him my salvation. <clears throat> Glory. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this, the first Sunday in Lent, is from Deuteronomy chapter 26. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance, and have taken possession of it and live in it, you shall take some of the fruit of all the fruit of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from your land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket, and you shall go to the place that the Lord your God will choose, to make his name to dwell there. And you shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God, that I have come into this land that the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Then the priest shall take the basket from your hand and set it before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall make response before the Lord your God. 
a wandering Armenian was my father, and he went down into Egypt and sojourned there, few in number. There he became a great nation, a great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians treated us harshly and humiliated us and laid on us hard labor. Then we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, with great deeds of terror, with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And behold, now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground, which you, O Lord, have given me. And you shall set it down before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. And you shall rejoice in all the good that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, you and the Levite and the sojourner who is among you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 10. The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand in reverence to the gospel message. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. When they were ended, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, Command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took him up, and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours." Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem, and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, o Christ. We confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on the top of page 7 in our bulletins. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Take the easy way out. It seems to be kind of the cry of our culture today. Take the easy way out. Don't do all the hard work. Let somebody else do all the hard work. Do just the bare minimum to get by. Look for those uh, loopholes. There's got to be some shortcuts, or you can cut some corners some way. Uh, just take the easy uh, way out. Don't sweat hard work and labor. Let other people do all that. Just take the easy way out. Seems to be kind of the cry of our culture and if we're being uh, honest with ourselves, uh, we actually recognize that temptation in our own hearts as well. Just do the bare minimum in life. Just take the easy way out. Maybe that applies to uh, our jobs or even to our relationships. Uh, just uh, taking shortcuts seems to be a temptation for us. And Jesus, being fully human, had the same temptations. We see that in our gospel reading uh, this morning. The first uh, Sunday in Lent always focuses on the time when Jesus was led into the wilderness where he was tempted uh, by the devil. And so in our passage from Luke, uh, Jesus has been led out into the desert and for 40 days tempted by the devil. And, and after that 40 days, uh, Jesus was hungry. I can't even go 40 minutes. 40 days, Jesus is hungry. Then you start to see uh, the devil use this temptation. Just take the easy way out, Jesus. Jesus, you're starving. You haven't had anything substantial to eat for 40 days. And, and there's a, a rock over here, and, and nobody's around to even see Jesus. Just take that rock. Take the easy way out. Make a little shortcut here. Cut some corners. Do the bare minimum. Change this rock into bread so that you could eat. Take the easy way out. Jesus resists that temptation with the very word of God. So the devil is not done. The devil shows Jesus the world and all the kingdoms. And he says, to Jesus, this could all be yours. All the wealth, all the fortune, all the fame, all the glory is all yours. Just take the easy way out, Jesus. All you have to do, it's really not hard at all, all you have to do is just bow down and worship me and I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. And Jesus resists that temptation with the word of God. And finally, we are told, Satan takes uh, Jesus into Jerusalem up on the uh, temple, up to the pinnacle of the temple, the very highest point of the temple. And he says to Jesus, hey, you know, all those people gathered around at the bottom of the temple coming into worship, if you throw yourself down from the temple, the angels, of course, will watch over you and protect you, and you'll be able to float down safely, and the people will claim that you are the Messiah. They will see this great wonder. Just take the easy way out, and the people will worship you as their long-awaited Messiah. Jesus resists that temptation with the Word of God. And behind these temptations of the devil is really one temptation— Take the easy way out. Avoid the cross. That's what the devil really wants Jesus to do. To avoid the cross. The cross would be hard and difficult, excruciating, challenging. Jesus, just avoid the cross. Take the easy way out. There's got to be an easier way for you to get all that fame and fortune and have the people gather around and worship you. Avoid the cross. And this was the temptation that was with Jesus throughout the entirety of his life, throughout the entirety of his ministry. We see in Luke's gospel, after Jesus had resisted all these temptations by using the word of God, it says that the devil left him till a more opportune time which is pretty much the rest of his ministry. So many times 
where Jesus must have been tempted to avoid the cross, take the easy way out. And one comes to my mind especially, just uh, actually a few years down the road, just a little bit away from the time when he's actually going to go to Jerusalem uh, to the cross, Jesus pulls his disciples aside. And he begins to teach them what's going to happen. And it isn't pretty. And it isn't going to be easy. He says to his disciples that I'm about to go to Jerusalem. And when I get there, I will be betrayed. And I'll be handed over to the religious leaders. And they will torture me. And they will kill me. And yet I will rise again on the third day. Jesus tells his disciples that he's going to Jerusalem and it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. And there's going to be death. And his good friend Peter, there amongst the disciples, hears Jesus' words. And Peter pulls Jesus aside. And Peter says to Jesus, Jesus, if you're going to Jerusalem and that's going to happen in Jerusalem, then don't go to Jerusalem. Take the easy way out. Don't go there. And so Jesus, of course, hears Peter say, don't go there. And he knows that the devil is behind those words. Avoid the cross, Jesus. Take the easy way out. If they're going to crucify you in Jerusalem, then you don't want to have any part of that. Avoid that at all costs. These were the words of Peter. And, and Jesus says to Peter, clearly, get behind me, Satan. Satan. Because you do not have in mind the things of God, but rather the things of man. You see, the things of man just do enough to get by. Take the easy way out. Cut some corners. Find some loopholes and some shortcuts. But the things of God? Hard work sacrifice, surrender, suffering, death. The devil tells Jesus, take the easy way out, and Jesus says, you do not have in mind the things of God. See, Jesus knows that he has to go to Jerusalem. Why? Because there is no shortcut to salvation. Jesus had come into this world to save you and I and save the world from our sins. And there is no shortcut to that salvation. There is no shortcut to the forgiveness that we need. Jesus knew that. And he knew that the way of salvation would be hard. It would be difficult. It'd be excruciating. It'd be painful. It would lead even to his death. It would lead to a cross. And Jesus knew how important that cross was. Now, you and I also know how important the cross is. But I wonder sometimes, in fact, if perhaps we've become too familiar with the cross. Too familiar with Jesus. So that when we say things like we said earlier in our service... I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess all to you, confess to you all my sins and iniquities. Do we really believe those words? Do we really see ourselves as poor, miserable sinners? Or is that just lip service? Perhaps sometimes we think to ourselves, <laughs> I'm a sinner, but a poor, miserable one, really? Uh, not so much. I mean, I make some mistakes, some errors every now and then. Sure, I don't love God the way I should sometimes. He understands that. And I'm not really good about loving my neighbor, but it's their own fault, right? So we kind of say those words, poor, miserable sinner. But do we really believe <laughs> that we're actually sinners? We might, we might think to ourselves, at least I'm not like that guy. Right Now that's a poor, miserable sinner over there. Or that lady over there, that's really a sinner and not me. Or we might even think, as I said earlier, just, you know, I sure I made some mistakes, but I wouldn't have done it if they hadn't said it first or they hadn't done it first. 
It's not my fault. I'm doing this because they did this. See, we come up all these kinds of excuses, and we say those words, a poor, miserable sinner, but do we really believe the depth of our sin? Or do we sometimes just try to avoid the cross? Avoid thinking and contemplating what that cross is and what it's for. Because we do know what the cross is for, don't we? The cross is what our sins deserve. Our sins cast us away from God. Our sins condemn us. Our sins deserve a cross. We can't ignore sin or put it under the rug or look for a loophole of some sort or find a shortcut around it. The truth is our sins deserve death. As poor, miserable sinners, God's law of justice should condemn us. And Jesus knew that. Jesus knew that our sins deserve death, and so he, out of love for us, chose that death for us, in place of us. He chose that death, not just any death, not the easy way out kind of death, but the hardest death of all. He chose death by a cross and everything that came with it. Prophet Isaiah says, surely, surely he took up our infirmities and our iniquities. He was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we have been healed. He chose the cross and everything that with, with, went with it. He chose the betrayal. He chose the torture, the whip the flogging at the hands of the soldiers. He, cho he chose the mockery and the ridicule and the scorn. He chose. He chose the crown of thorns. He chose those nails in his flesh. He chose the wood of the cross. He chose that pain and that suffering. He chose that death. He chose the condemnation of our sins. He chose that death. He chose that grave. He chose that stone rolled in place because that's what sin deserves. And Jesus chose the resurrection, coming back to life, conquering Satan and sin and death. Jesus chose that victory and he did it all because he chose you and he chose me he did it all out of great love for us and for the entire world for us he was baptized for us he was tempted by the devil in the desert for us he was crucified for us he rose he did it all for us that's Christ's love That's what the cross was all about. And that's why it's important for us. Each and every time we gather here in worship, and we have special opportunities even during this uh, Lenten season. In many ways, that's what the Lenten season is about. It'd be very easy for us to just simply go from this Sunday and next Sunday and just go all the way to Easter and celebrate his victory over sin and death, which we will, don't worry, we'll get there. But the journey from here to the empty tomb, it's important that we take some time not to take the easy way out, but to do the hard thing, to allow the Spirit to work on our hearts for us to truly contemplate our sins, to recognize our guilt. Because as we know, as we contemplate the depth of our sins, the depth of our guilt, then we can truly rejoice in the height and the width and the breadth 
and the, and the, and the uh, length of Christ's love for us. And so that's what we do during this uh, season of Lent. In humility and confession, we humble ourselves, we take an honest look at our lives, we confess our sins in repentance, and in faith, in faith, we kneel at the foot of the cross and we cling to Christ who died for us and rose again in victory. In faith, we cling to Christ. We glory in the cross. For only in the cross do we have the forgiveness of sins and eternal salvation. Glory in the cross. No shortcuts. Amen. May the peace of God which transcends all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Having heard the word, and now as our offerings come forward at this time, we join by singing the offertory on page 8, Creating Me a Clean Heart. Please stand. We join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Most High, be the dwelling place of your people. For the sake of Jesus, who suffered temptation and death for our redemption, be our refuge. Preserve the people of St. Paul's, especially those not in attendance with us this day, and Greg and Sue Holsey, Jonathan Holsey, Nicole Hunt and Piper Jump, Joe, Kayla, Easton, Finn, and Crew Hurley, from every evil and plague, and strengthen us in faith so that we might be satisfied with your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord, in the midst of this life, we are beset by many temptations. Fix our eyes on our Lord Jesus, who bore temptation for us and resisted the point of death. Bring us through the evils of this fallen world to dwell with you forever. Lord, in your mercy, Father in heaven, your son trampled the serpent underfoot and freed us from sin and death by his own death on the cross. Protect and preserve all whom call, you call to preach Christ and him crucified. Guide Pastor Michelle Liu and the Chinese mission here at St. Paul's with Pastor Paul and family as they serve in Taiwan and Brian and Barb Sorge as they work in Asia. Command your angels concerning them. Guard them in all of their ways. Bear them up for the sake of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy... Lord of all, you bestow your riches on all who call upon you. We give you thanks for the gift of marriage and especially those who celebrate wedding anniversaries this week. For Alan and Heather Alvey, Luke and Summer Morgan, John and Whitney Spinks, Jean Zhu and Wei Ku, Mike and Susan Tooley, and Van and Betty DePries. Bless also all parents with the wisdom that comes from you as they teach their children your ways that all in the household may confess with their mouths, Jesus is Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, govern the kingdoms of this world according to your holy and gracious will. Protect authorities from every temptation of the devil who falsely claims sovereignty over them. Equip them instead to curb what is evil and promote what is good. 
Look after our brothers and sisters in Christ where there is strife and discord. Uphold those who are persecuted because of the faith which we share in you. Lord, in your mercy, God of all mercy, you answer those who call upon you. Hear our prayers for all those who are in need of healing and restoration. Especially we lift up to your care Bob Grant, Luann Pierce, Amelia Neenaber, Frank Rankowicz, John Woodson, Doris Malone, Caleb Spicer, Jim Lance, Ruth Bashir, Ethan Fenwick, Betsy Emhoff, Naomi and Baby Quinn, Pat Greenfield, Ralph Paulson, Larry Helming, Carol Stevens, and Rosalind Dixon. Be with them in their trouble and rescue them according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, everyone who believes in Jesus as Lord will not be put to shame. Unite your people in a right confession of your word, and, thus freed from disagreement over your truth, bring us with penitent hearts to receive the great riches of your Son, which he showers upon us through the word and the sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, your Son was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to suffer temptation for our sake as a part of our redemption. Strengthen us when we are tempted, so that we do not take his, disobedi his obedience for granted, but teach us to rely upon your word as our defense against the evil one. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.